Hey, it's Dr. Brenda, founder of the Gutsy Women Club, where women dare to dream and take bold actions to follow the heart's journey. Financial coach, sociologist, mom of three kitty cats who are traveling the country in our RV. And hey, please subscribe below. I'd really appreciate it. So I'm coming at you. It's early October. I'm uh, uh, just uh, crossed into Arizona. I have to switch my time clock again because they're on technically Pacific time at this point. So I am, what am I doing talking about making reservations for 2022? I'm telling you what, um, you gotta get ahead of the game or it, the old slogan, you snooze, you lose. That's the way it is these days in RVing. So I've got five tips, five, five tips for you to help you plan next year out and I know you know some of you hate planning and 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 the whole idea of planning has turned a lot of people off of RVing but if you don't plan it's just it just doesn't work out these days now you I'm first of all I'm going to say I'm not a boondocker um, I like my power I like to have a cell reception I've got to work from my RV I like my safety issues so um, if you are boondocking, it's certainly a whole lot easier to just go ahead and figure out where you're going to be from day to day. But I don't live like that. I don't like to live like that. So I am a planner. Works in my favor, but uh, it's getting more and more difficult. I've been out on the road. Um, oh, 18, 19 months now. And next summer will be my third summer out and of course I started with COVID so things were a little bit different back then. All right so I'm already doing my plan and here are the five tips. Number one, okay I use software. I can't possibly keep track of this on a, a notepad and a piece of paper or a big calendar. It just doesn't work. The software allows me to enter how much I've paid, whether I've booked it, it gets me the dates that I'm reserved or the dates where I want to be someplace and I can fill in the rest of the calendar from that. So I love RV Trip Wizard. It's, I just cannot function without it. Um, so that is, that is my advice is to get some software. I really do recommend RV Trip Wizard. Works really great for me. I cannot do anything without it. So that's that's number one. You got to be really organized and that software will help you do it. All right. The second thing, I've got like the whole calendar ahead of me, right? I, I know when I'm, I'm, I'm headed out of my winter home and that's about it. The whole calendar is in front of me, except it isn't. So one of the things that you do is you start with those events, those places where you know you want to be, when you want to be there. Start with a couple of events. So I am going to um, try to go to a rally and I know that there is an RV rally in Tennessee in June. I've got the dates ahead of my time, ahead of time. So I put that location, that time period into RV Trip Wizard. So that's one thing that I know that I want to do and that goes in there, then I can work around those events. Uh, second item is I've got family in Wisconsin. I'll go see them. So I'll, I'll have a tentative date and definitely I know the location so I can put that into the RV Trip Wizard. And then a third event, third thing that I want to do is spend a month at the same place, uh, preferably in the Northeast, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. And I want to stay at the same place. So I'm like, okay, that's the third placeholder. So having those placeholders there helps me build my schedule around those dates. So that helps. So that's number two uh, are the placeholders. Number three, have some priorities. So for me, I am very fond of state parks, national parks, Corps of Engineer campgrounds. Those are my favorite. That is what I prioritize. And I prioritize those campgrounds combined with, I work on the road, so I've got to have cell service, either Verizon, uh, preferably AT&T, cell service, wireless, 
um, can't not work without it. So those are my priorities, but by having those priorities, it helps me plan, helps me, um, you know, designate a shorter list of potentials. I'll just put it that way. Okay, number four is think about the weather and think about the hazards that come up. So I'm, I'm gonna be leaving Texas in March and I'll tell you what, springtime in, in that part of the country, much large parts of the country are, are tornado weather. So I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm looking to you know get on out further to the East Coast. So trying to skirt that weather. I had to make a decision. Um, I'm gonna be in the Northeast and I had to make a decision about whether I wanted to come down on the eastern seaboard. Uh, I used to live in Virginia. It seems like the hurricane weather usually hits in September. So I'm like, you know what? That's probably not a good idea to go down the coast in late August and into September. That's probably not what I want to do. Um, I also, I spent last summer on the Oregon coast. People were cooking in Oregon. I mean, they were roasting. It was temperatures were hot. I was on the Oregon coast in my long underwear. I mean, it was way too cold for me. So yeah, think about the weather, think about the weather hazards as you figure out where you wanna be, when do you wanna be there, okay? And then the fifth tip I have is book it, pay for it now. Book it, I mean, with the national parks, state parks, you gotta pay up right away. Get it booked, you can cancel it out later but get it booked. I began, um, so I knew I wanted to go from Texas down into Florida, and I know the Florida parks are so tough to get into, and they've got an 11 month leeway. So I um, had a little notice on my calendar, on my, on my alarm, on my clock, like, okay, this date, check to see if this is available. So I booked my two parks in Florida, um, long months and months ago, but I went back yesterday and I'm looking at some of the parks that I want to go to. There were a couple of really highly rated parks on the uh, coast of South Carolina. They're all full. They're all full for May or June. And yes, it's early October. So um, I've had to sort of divert around them, chain, make some different plans, go inland. Um, I've had to already skirt some of my plans. Now I'm, I'm on the west coast, I'm on the western part, the mountain states right now. So I had a fantastic summer here, fantastic fall here. Um, but yep, it's time to go back to the northeast. Uh, just another thing, when I'm planning and when you are planning, so I've got one of these maps on my RV, right? So I've been, I don't know how many states, I'm up to 27, 28, 29 states. And I have some states that I just skirted around or haven't been through. All right, my goal is not to fill up that map. I mean, it's kind of neat to see where I've been, but as I was planning, I let my heart rule, where do I want to be? And for me, it's the mountains, uh, the canyons, um, if I can get some beachside, beach time on a lake or an ocean, that is perfect for me. But I really let my heart rule where it is that I wanted to be. And that, I had to make some difficult decisions. I'm like, okay, I'm a Midwesterner. How long do I want to be in the Midwest? Um, I, 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 I am so much more active when there are mountains. I want to stay active. So I did make some decisions based on that. But yeah, you have got to book right now. Um, I am doing research now on campgrounds in Vermont uh, where I can stay for a month and I'm already getting, we've got a wait list, we're jam packed, we're full. And so I'm gonna be working on that this week to see if I can find a, a really attractive place where I can stay for a month, but it is tough out there. It is not getting any easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna recap what we've got. So I've got, you know, the five things. Number one is use some software like RV Trip Wizard. Number two, set a few uh, target dates, a few events, put that on your calendar, make reservations if you can, work around those, those dates. 
Um, third is have your priorities. Are you going to be staying in state parks or private resorts? Are you looking for fancy places with swimming pools? Are you looking for forests? What are you looking for? Do you need cell service? So set up a couple of priorities for yourself. Um, a fourth piece is look at those those where you want to be. Look at you know where where you can pretty much predict you might have some weather issues and work around that. So you know try to avoid the hurricane weather, the tornado weather. I don't know if you can avoid fire weather because that seems to be year round right now. But you get the idea. I'll work around those weather hazards. And then finally, you see an opening that looks pretty attractive to you, book it. You might go back tomorrow and find that somebody else has that site. So just book it. You got, if you gotta pay for it, pay for it. Put it on your credit card, but just do it right away. And um, if, again, one final piece of advice, sort of let your heart rule. You know, when, you, when you're starting, when you've got a plan like six, seven, eight, nine, ten months in advance, even a year out, um, yeah, let your heart rule. Um, go where you really want to be. Yeah, you might have some family obligations, some people to visit, but go where you really want to be. Okay, now that is it for today. Good luck. Um, I hope to see you out on the road. And hey, if there are any other solo women RVers out there and you're looking to connect with me, just send me a message. And um, once I get things set up, I can share my itinerary with you. And if you want to pop in, try to see if you can get a campground in that same place or in the area and stop by and say hi, maybe go for a hike together. That'd be cool. All right. Hey, please subscribe. And until next time, it's Dr. Brenda. So long. Happy planning. Bye-bye.